Hello guys, I welcome you all to my channel Ingenious Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve these two problems which says that replace the force system acting on the beam by an equivalent force and couple moment at point A and then at point B. So we have to find, uh, we have to replace these three forces by their equivalent resultant force and couple moment. So what we need to do is that first we have to replace these three uh, forces by its resultant and couple moment about point A and then about point B. So first of all, we have to find the resultant. So we can, uh, first of all, we have to resolve the forces which are making some angles. So uh, this 1.5 kN force is making 30 degrees with the vertical. So we can resolve it. It will have two components it will have one component in this direction since the angle is made with this component so this is the cost component so i will write that this is 1.5 cos of 30 and similarly this will have one component in this direction this one will be the sine component so let me write that this is 1.5 sine of 30 Similarly, uh, the angle of this 2.5 kN force is given in the shape of this triangle. So, we this one, if I draw this component, we will have two components for this. So, if we are going to consider this angle, then from the triangle, we are considering this angle, right? Let me show that we have this triangle, we are considering this angle. So, we are considering this angle. So, if we are considering this angle, this component is the cost component. So, I will write that this is, uh, is 2.5 cos of theta and this component is 2.5 sine of theta. And from this triangle, from this triangle, cos of theta is the base. Base is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. And similarly sine of theta is perpendicular so the perpendicular is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5. so now first of all we have to find the resultant now the resultant will be equal to the rx component of the resultant will be equal to the summation of forces along the x-axis is that will be that will give us rx so this is this is our positive x and this is our positive y so towards the right is our positive x so now as we can see that this 1.5 sine of 30 this component is towards the right so it is acting in the positive x so i will write plus 1.5 sine of 30 and this cos component this is in the negative x so i will write minus 2.5 and cos of theta is 4 divided by 5 so divided by 5 and there is no other component in the x so this will be equal to 0 so this is this will give us our x now our x is equal to so we can say that this is 1.5 sine of 30 minus 2.5 into 4 divided by 5 this gives me minus 1.25 so minus 1.25 and this will be in kilonewton since the given forces are in kilonewton so this is the uh, our x component this is the magnitude and the negative signs tells us that our x is acting in the negative x direction similarly the r y and the positive direction the upward direction is positive so r y will be equal to the summation of forces along y that will be equal to now, as we can see that we have this sign, this sign component, this component, this component, all are acting in the downward direction. So all of these are in the negative direction. So I will write minus 2.5, this minus 2.5 sine of theta, sine of theta is 3 divided by 5. So minus 2.5 into 3 divided by 5. Then this, this is uh, minus 1.5 cos of 30. 1.5 cos of 30 and then this 3 kilonewton this is in the negative direction as well so minus 3 and this will give us minus 2.5 into 3 divided by 5 minus 1.5 cos of 30 and minus 3 
so this gives us our y equals to minus 5.7 or we can say that this is 5.799 so this is 5.80 kilonewton now we can write that the resultant vector is equal to the rx magnitude is 1.25 and it is acting in the negative i direction and our y magnitude is 5.80 and it is acting in the negative j direction so this is the this is the cartesian vector representation of the resultant and similarly um, if i draw the free body diagram let's say now this is that beam here we have that point A. Now at point A, the resultant has x component in, in the x component in the negative direction. So you will write that this is uh, minus 1.25. We can say that this is 1.25 kilonewton. Remember that the units are in kilonewtons, and the y component is in the negative direction as well. So this is 5.80 kilonewton in the negative j. And if we eat both of these compounds by head to tail rule, so this will be the resultant. So this is our resultant like this. This is the resultant. And now if you want to find the resultant magnitude, we can always apply the Pythagoras theorem. So our magnitude, this will be equal to the square of the components magnitude. The sum of the squares of the components magnitude under the square root. So this is... 1.25 square plus 5.80 square so the magnitude the resultant magnitude is 5.93 kilonewton so now this resultant is 5.93 kilonewton and let's say that this is making some angle theta uh, with the horizontal so now if you want to find this angle theta let's say that this is angle phi let's say uh, sorry angle alpha so we can find this angle alpha if we apply tan theta this is that this is the r y component this is the r x component so tan alpha tan alpha is perpendicular which is r y this is the perpendicular this is the perpendicular and this is the r x so tan alpha is perpendicular divided by base and we can say that alpha is equal to 10 inverse and our y magnitude is 5.80 our x magnitude is 1.25 so this is 10 inverse 5.80 divided by 1.25 this gives us alpha equals to 77.84 degrees so now we can say that the resultant magnitude is the resultant magnitude is 5.93 kilonewton and it is making angle with the negative x-axis is that alpha angle and that alpha angle is 77.84 degrees so now after this we will find uh, the couple moment this is the resultant of these three uh, this four system and then we have to find the the resultant moment so we can say that the the resultant moment about point a that will be the couple and this is equal to the summation of moment of all these three forces so now uh, in in case of finding the moment about point a this height of the beam is considered to be negligible right uh, it is for the in for the simplicity of this problem we will assume that this height is zero so if this height is zero so from height h equals to zero we can say that this point a is located here actually if we are neglecting this height so now if if this point a is here then this component and this component they are passing through this point a so they are not going to produce the moment about this point a so only these vertical components these vertical components are forces are producing the moment about point a so now as we can see that this sine component is producing the clockwise moment this is producing the clockwise moment and this is producing the clockwise moment so the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive so all are producing the clockwise moment so i will write that minus 2.5 sine of theta sine of theta 
is 3 divided by 5 this is minus this is 2.5 sine of theta it is producing the clockwise moment so i will write minus 2.5 sine of theta and the moment arm of this component from that point a is this two meters so we will multiply this with two similarly this 1.5 cos of 30 it is producing the clockwise moment so we will write minus 1.5 of 30 and the perpendicular distance of this component from that point a is 6 so we will multiply it with 6 and then this 3 kilonewton this is again producing the clockwise moment so i will write minus 3 and the perpendicular distance of this 3 kilonewton force from that point a is uh, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 8 so we will multiply this with 8 so this will give us the resultant moment about point a so minus 2.5 into 3 multiply 2 divided by 5 minus uh, 1.5 into 6 cos of 30 so this is this is actually cos of 30 into 6 so we can write this as 6 cos of 30 minus 3 into 8 so this gives us the resultant moment about point a is equal to minus 34.79 this will be in kilonewton meter so now if we uh, replace if you want to replace these three forces by their equivalent force so this is that equivalent resultant force and we have to show that moment that it is going to produce so the moment that these three forces as a whole are producing about point a is this 3 um, uh, minus uh, 34.79 and the minus sign tells us that this is this moment is in the clockwise direction so we have to represent that so we have that moment that resultant moment about point a and this is magnitude is 34.79 kilonewton so we have replaced that uh, three forces that force system by a single force and its corresponding couple so this is the solution of uh, 499 so for for the solution of 400 the resultant will remain the same since we have these three forces acting in the same direction only the resultant moment about point b will be changed so let's find the resultant moment about point b that will be equal to the summation of moment and again the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive so now as we can see that uh, this 3 kilonewton force this is passing to this point b so the perpendicular distance of this 3 kilonewton force from this point b is zero so it's not going to produce the moment about this point b and again uh, this height is negligible so we, we we are going to consider the point b as this particular point so these two components they are passing through point b as well so only these two components they are producing the moment about point b now this cos component is producing the counterclockwise moment about point B. So I will write that this is plus 1.5 cos of 30. And the moment arm of this component from that point B is this perpendicular distance, which is 2. So we will multiply this with 2. And similarly, this sine component is producing the counterclockwise moment. And the perpendicular distance of this component from that point B is 6. So we will write plus... 2.5 sine of 30 is 3 divided by 5 and the moment arm is 6 this is 6 so the, uh, so this will give us this will give us um, 1.5 1.5 into 2 cos of 30 plus uh, 2.5 into to 3 multiply 6 divided by 5 this gives us 11.5 we can say that this is 11.60 approximately kilonewton meter so now again if if we draw that uh, beam so this is that beam this is that point a here we have that point b now we want to replace those uh, three forces by the equivalent force couple system at point B. So at point B we will have that same resultant, this same resultant. 
so let me draw that resultant here again so that resultant is going to act in this direction it is making that same angle that we have determined that alpha angle which is 77.84 the magnitude is 5.93 kilonewton and now we have this plus moment now we have this plus moment about point b so it is in the counterclockwise moment so we have to show that so let's show that now this is in the counterclockwise direction so this is the resultant moment about point b and this is equal to 11.60 kilonewton meter so this is how we can replace a force system by its equivalent force couple system at point a and then it is at point b so this is the solution of these two problems i hope it will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from hibler statics